So, hello, everybody again. Um, this is the, well, one could say the traditional session in LabsConf, how, what to do with Ortos. So only, there's a hope that this time we actually might be able to do something about it. So uh, just a brief recap. As you might know, I mean, this is not the first time we talk and we are talking about autos. And this is not the first time we are noticing that autos has some issues. And um, so we already had discussed it two years ago, three years ago, and last year. And always making up nice plans, what should be done, without anyone ever being able to actually do something about it. So, um, most notably, um, last year we had a discussion and came to the, con uh, to the strategy that really authors should be replaced by SUSE manager, and SUSE manager should be, should be handling things in the future. However, upon evaluation, we, quickly, uh, we figured that while SUSE Manager might be able to do so in principle, it is missing the crucial bits which are actually mandatory for autos or actually were the things why we did autos in the first place. Namely, it couldn't do reservations and it has, has issues with doing Pixie installations, which is frankly the features why we built autos. So, while it might be possible to eventually do it with SUSE Manager, the road to there might be a bit longer than expected. Meanwhile, we need to continue to work. So just not doing anything with Ortos and wait until SUSE Manager magically appears is probably not a good idea. So with the latest updates and rearrangements and reorgs in the company, we now find ourselves in the lucky position to actually have some manpower to handle autos on our own. This is not only with regards to the manpower for, maintain for the real hardware maintenance, but also with regards to the manpower of actually maintaining the software, autos as a software. So um, the first bit of this talk will be Thomas Renninger, who will be talking about the short time evolution of Ortos, basically how Ortos itself can e will evolve in the near future, what improvements there will be made, which then also can be leveraged by any future SUSE manager implementation. And then we'll have a second talk, that will be my part, uh, our second part of the talk, that'll be my side, um, talking about the actual arrangements, how do we work with machines, how can and should we handle things and issues going forward now that the I infrastructure team will be reorganized and the entire SUSE IT system will be redone and whatnot. So, so let's start with Thomas presenting Ortos Future. My name is Thomas Renninger. Um, I'm in, this, in the SLEE core team, the former architecture team. Um, most people think oh. I'm Hold doing on. this um, auto stuff. Just to interrupt you a short second. I do remind everybody, uh, this sec uh, session is recorded. So try to be a bit careful, not giving out any details which might or might not be under NTA, and also watch your language. Right. Um, yes. Most people might, might think um, I'm in charge of this author's thing for, for quite some time. Um, that's not really true. Uh, um, I'm just sitting in the same room and, and um, helping out for, for quite some years. Um, yes, um, a lot um, to understand the, the current situation. Um, yeah, one has to look at history. Um, Hannes helped me there uh, quite a lot already. Yeah, we. Um, <laughs> There's a screen there, which oh does right. exactly the same. Right, perfect, perfect. How perfect. Yeah, so, so it's a really old tool. 
and um, it was in kind of maintenance mode, and then Hannes said that already. Um, um, it wasn't developed anymore. Um, there was an Authors 2 sta uh, started up. Um, um, wait a second. <coughs> Close missing feature. Wait a second. Okay, anyway. Um, yes, but it's an important tool for, for, for the SUSE labs, um, frequently used by a lot of people. Um, and it's getting, yeah, it, it, it always had flaws, and this is what, yeah, not all, yeah, this is why it always come up, um, especially because of, of um, it mostly works for automated installation in the, in, in the, local, in the local network only. It has been hacked up for Prague, um, but uh, yes, um, um, other architectures cannot be um, cannot be used in, in other on other networks at all. Only in the ISUSE E network. Um, it's still Python two based. It's still running on a SLE eleven server. And nobody wants to touch this. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, now we get, uh, we, um, get, we're getting more and more in this situation that urgently something has to be done. Yeah? Um, and as Hannes said, now um, I started to, to yeah, not to think about it, that there was something about Susan Manager and, and whatever, and, and um, um, yes, after some evaluation, I think in, um, yes, this is what I started, I wanted to start first. <laughs> Why we came there, I think we, we can, we, we can uh, drop this one about two years ago. Uh, internet SUSE tools, use open source. Yeah, yeah, this was the idea. Why, uh, why we came there. Um, um, the SUSE manager is a huge, huge, uh, super big tool. Yeah. Um, which um, I'm pretty sure is, is, is the wrong way to go, at least for, for, for short term. Um, uh, I had a quick talk with, with Hubert, Hubert Mantel. He said, this is a huge beast. <coughs> if you're working on it for years, you still have only a, um, um, a, a, tiny, a tiny idea of the code. Um, still, it's a, it's a good idea to, to, to use an open source tool. Yeah, I, you have a question. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, while it's true that uh, Autos is currently running on SLE 11, I already ported it to SLE 12, and I'm sure we can do that also for SLE 15. So Music 2 RxUCDE is running SLE 12 and without any problems. So migrating these machines shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay. No, it's, um, the thing is, it's not so much. Uh, you're right. It might not be much of an issue. But until now, we simply, to put it nicely, didn't have the manpower for doing so. I, I, I very much Just say go. Hmm? I, I very much appreciate your system, your, your system D service file, I guess. Um, would be nice to, to, to let people know <laughs> um, that you already done this. Um, but it's more than a system D service file. Um, it, it has to be a Python 3 stable for SLE 15. Um, this the step by step. How we get there is, is on the next slides. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's a definitely a good idea to to, to work on open source tools, um, get the, the early hardware we get tested and, and push the code back to, uh, ma mainline and get it into our in our software. Whether it's it's user manager or whatever, it's it's definitely a, a good idea. And and authors never never has been there. Huh? So this was the idea with the user manager. Um, but as I said, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's much too big. Changing is su such a software on the fly is not that easy. Yeah? You're all working with it. Everybody is complaining it doesn't work. In fact, it works. <laughs> if you change the tool, um, if you change the GUI, um, yeah, on several hundred ma uh, maintained machines, several subnetworks, a lot of supported architectures, a lot of things will break and a lot of th uh, people will complain. 
Yeah, so you have to, to do a step-by-step -step, um, move so that perfectly nobody realizes um, that another software is running or whatever. And um, very convenient came in um, that SUSE manager takes an open source project which is more or less similar to Authos. Uh, it's called Coupler. And a lot of um, features in there are, are overlapping. It's even the same language written in Python. And this is the current idea um, I'm heading to. Uh, we cleaned up authors up here with the interfaces. Um, yes, uh, so maybe so this. Um, so ba basically, the general idea here is to, as you can see, that Cobbler has a quite large overlap with, um, with Altos. And Apparently, Susan Manager is using Cobbler internally or is working on w using Cobbler uh, internally. So, okay, as they're using Cobbler internally, any work we do to make Cobbler work with our internal setup will automatically benefit anything we do on Susan Manager. If and so, meaning that if and when we move over to Susan Manager, we, I got a thingy here, so that works just perfectly. No, that's just, uh, you can just, just continue in a few minutes. Um, <laughs> just let me prattle on, that's fine. Um, Go ahead. Oh, thank you. So, and, um, all, and it also has a nice benefit that it will obsolete quite a large chunk of the um, author's code base. So, when we do the move for, uh, when we, when author's moves to Coppola, the size of the code for Autos internal will remove, so then the porting of Autos, of the remaining Autos code over to a future release, say Celeste 12 or Celeste 15, or rather make it Python, uh, move to Python 3, will become less of a challenge than, than it is nowadays. I and, see you have written my slides yesterday, perfectly. Yeah. And, and you're pretty lucky because the uh, system manager guys ported Cobbler to Python 3 recently. So there may be still some a few bugs here and there, but you'll benefit from that as well. Yeah, in oh. fact, we, we, we did this. A uh, couple is, um, since Red Hat is not you, um, maintaining spacewalk anymore, whatever, um, yeah, we, we, um, we, we, we could, yeah, no, I wouldn't say take over, there's still um, other people um, maintaining as well, but we are, have maintainership in Coupler mainline as well. So, um, yeah. However, um, let's continue. Uh, so you see, right, um, a lot of code is, is, is similar. Um, so how, shall, uh, how are we doing this? So first, um, um, the interfaces to authors have been um, cleaned up a bit um, so that it com communicates um, to another instance, let's say. Um, this is a future. Right? It needs not to, to stay coupled in the future. Um, to, to communicate with, with other networks. And um, it has already been, uh, work has already been done uh, to set this up in, in Provo on, um, um, thanks to Mike Latima and Tana, whoever's in the references. <laughs> um, I got a, a tiny DHCP server on the network, um, excluding two MAC addresses for, for to use as coupler clients. And, um, and which is uh, where Coppler is running and which is controlled by authors. Um, the same in Prague. Prague is, a, um, is heavily used by Mel Gorman with the setup. Yeah, um, and the advantage of Provo is um, you cannot install via authors currently there. You can, it's, it's, it's called kind of read-only mode, yeah? Um, if an SSH key is placed on, in, on machines in, 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 in wherever in the world, it's easy to, to add them to authors to, to let them scan. But um, the automatic installation feature is kind of much more work, of course. You have to, you have, to have the control over the local uh, network, over the DHCP and, and, the, uh, and the TFTP boot uh, configuration, which is done by, by, by Coppola now. Um, Yes, and you have to point to the, lo um, to the local um, installation mirrors um, 
who has joined um, Lars' um, talk, uh, OBS. Um, they are maintaining these, these uh, mirrors in, in um, Provo, Prague, another one in Beijing, uh, one in Nuremberg. Yeah, and um, automatic installation, you have to point to these to, to, to lower the traffic. The mirrors. Um, are you guys aware that the system manager guys have a mirror as well in Provo, mirroring a lot of stuff in IBS and OBS? And is there a way to reuse your stuff and share? Well, the, the, work? the, the, the biggest problem we have with Susan Manager is that Susan Manager is working on release products. Just talk with us. Sorry? Uh, it's probably the same mirror set up by the OBS guys. It's probably the same. So as a manager, people probably use the same mirror. Well, I don't know. That's why I'm saying we just need to talk. Yeah. So no, no. The, one of the problems we are having with Susan Manager is that Susan Manager is geared up for delivering products. Yeah. So you can register all products, everything you like, whatever, blah blah. However, we are doing development. We do not have products. In fact, we make the products. Uh, was not the question. It was about the, the, the mirror that no, Susan Manager the, that people the are using the, uh, probably using the same mirror. Uh, um, whether they use exactly the same directory, I'm not sure, but but it's probably. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. Then you should talk with the OBS guys and us. <laughs> but you can also add the repositories we have for development to the manager. This is not a problem. Okay. Good. So so it is not strictly bound to products as we sell them. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, back. Um, um, after integrating Provo at Prague where I hopefully um, um, we can get, uh, we can uh, fully set up Coupler running, um, taking over control over the full DHCP server. Um, the idea is um, to set up a Coupler server in Nuremberg as well. Um, and music next, it's already installed. <laughs> um, there it's a lot of more work because we have much more um, architectures to, to to support and to test. In the mainline tool, it came out that um, we're still running into the one or other issue, which we submit mainline and so on, but it's, yeah, it's a step by step, yeah, but it's controlled and, and nobody else is, is realizing this right now. Yeah? Um, below the scenes, it's, it's, it's all background work. Yeah? Um, you guys still, it's fully transparent. Mel Gorman can still use whoever is, has scripted the, uh, via the author's command line tool, whatever, or the, um, or the web interface is not changing at all. Uh, maybe they're showing up a setup button now and showing up some extra um, um, installation sources, but it's fully transparent to the user. And yes, I has been contacted from Beijing about ARM, um, and he had tried out authors too. Uh, the uh, poor guy. Uh, anyway, it would be nice to have a um, um, coupler set up somewhere in Beijing using the, the Beijing mirror, which exists, but uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Anyway, so there is a mirror running. Uh, um, OBS guys didn't, for, for, didn't forget Beijing. It would be nice to get a food in there as well. And yes. Um, it's not that nice anymore, but anyway, the future ideas um, on short term. Yeah, one, there's some tiny, yeah, tiny issues with coupler is copying the init ID and the kernel from from installation source, but for our um, use case, it has to be a link. And this is why, why, why Rüdiger Oertl at OBS is always providing an NFS mount. Um, this doesn't matter as long as you have a, a release product, which never changes. Uh, but we, it's a tiny thing, but because it's an open source tool, it's ugly to, to make it. Anyway, it's my problem. It's going to be, um, it's one of the short term things I have to, I have to look at. Um, um, yeah. Um, if we have, if there is a running coupler in Nuremberg as well, um, I'd like to eliminate the, the duplicate code in authors, uh, this old stuff. This is where we, will, we want to head for. Uh, we don't want to maintain the stuff ourselves. And um, raise up this to Python 3, the rest. Possibly implement the serial console locking. 
whatever is possible. Um, um, the command line client, there's a command line client in Coppola already. Uh, not sure whether it's the, the query tool is really nice in, in, in authors. Um, think about what, what we, we could implement um, in, in the mainline tool already and, and only port the remaining stuff so that we, have, we are still transparent um, not to the outside world, to the users, to you. And, and, and yes, and then we are, yeah, the action required thing is, is, is checked. Yeah, then uh, this, is, this is where I try to head to. Yeah, then we are up to date with code. Um, using um, using mainline sources the op um, for for all architectures, so, um, all all subnets um, can auto auto install. Um, this is the short term problem I talked about. Yes, the so um, yes, there's the one problem, for example, that 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 every subnet. Maintenance is a bit different. Yeah? Um, in Prague, they, they use SALT to auto-deploy the DHCP server. Um, in, in, even in, in Nuremberg, in the Harvey lab, the, the NTS guys, they have their own self-written tools where they, if, add, if they add some, anyway. So um, the idea of, co of putting in their coupler in, in, in a defined way um, uh, is, in my opinion, the perfect approach, but you have to convince people um, um, and yeah, and, and, and convince people that you have to take over the DHCP server. Let's see how it how it works out. Um, Long-term ideas, yes. The long-term ideas are we have some defined interfaces now. It's in fact it's really not much in authors. Um, it's only doing the reservation stuff, and if it runs out, doing a um, triggering an, 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 an reinstall or a notification email, and um, and for, um, Thorsten Kukuk, Richard Brown mentioned a new new fancy Yomi installation tool. If you have these interfaces, it's it's more or less rather easy to write instead of a coupler.py uh, authors module, uh, even a SUSE manager.py module could be possible to, to um, um, so the manager has an on top API um, where you can add, add machines or whatever. Yeah, we have these interfaces and, and can continue in the future. We can adapt. Uh, we adapt, not you succeed, we adapt, we succeed, it should be here. Huh? Mm. But I couldn't, uh, well, anyway. You succeed. Um, this is this is the background of, of the talk. I'd like to quickly show um, where we are. Um, if it works out, if VPN is still up, um, one second. like to make a comment. Yeah, sure. But um, go ahead. From, it could be addressed in the later part of the presentation. I don't know. Uh, I suggest we start thinking if uh, this project gained traction to the migration strategy uh, to deploy this new orthos in a way that is non-disruptive because it's not trivial to, s to replace the entire fleet uh, from being managed by the current orthos to the new uh, orthos, number one. And number two, I think it will be really useful uh, for the development of this tool that uh, in each sub-network like Prague, Nuremberg, or wherever, uh, to place probe machines, inexpensive machines that serve to the purpose of testing and deploying and trying this, because at the moment, I think when Thomas has to do some changes or testing a cobbler, he says, I will just use the existing Orthos machine. But those are there for development. Like in Prague, we have machines we use for performance. Give me have a look at this. So those are two, this is exactly so where we are right now. Yeah, we, so have, we have two or three um, test machines in, in, in Provo and in Prague. Yeah. And things are working already. 
Okay. Uh, currently, it's it's hard coded um, specific machines in in authors which which um, which can be maintained via via coupler. In Provo, it's RDMA two and three. It's not a free machine because it's mine. And, you know, these are a lot of dead machines. Uh, I'm taking the red ones uh, still from whatever uh, RDMA three. Yeah, and for some time there is now a setup button for Provo as well. It takes a while because it has to 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 ask the the coupler server in Provo about the possible installation um, distributions. The Provo mirror does only have SLE. Um, it's also dynamic. It reads, uh, and um, there are no open source distros mirrored in in. Um, Right, and you hit the button and installation starts. Do you really need the OpenSUSE stuff via NFS? No, not at all. Yeah. It didn't because we have an OpenSUSE mirror in Provo. Yes, Rüdiger so, already, that there were already the ISOs mm -hmm. mirrored and, and Rüdiger already um, unpacked or, or loop mounted, whatever. These for, anyway, so mm -hmm. it's, it's enough. Uh, and I finally fi find the right people to contact and things are working out. So if you hit the button, it already works. Yeah, you also get. Ah, it's the. Ah, it's the. Um, you also get the um, serial console. Um, very expected as console one. Um, the serial console log, everything in in authors as you as, as you used to. Same for the pro some probable machines. Um, wait a second. Yeah, and the probable park machines. Well, they more been. And this didn't exist before. Here you'll see another subset of possible installable machines, uh, in, uh, distributions. Here you have Leap. Um, and this is all going through Coupler. So, wait a second. So this is the Coupler Server in Provo. Um, there's also a kind of command line for Coupler. Um, I've scripted it a bit. Um, these are the system. Uh, these are the, the distributions um, um, deployed there. I, I'd say, yeah. And you typically get the cop. So um, I delete them now. Yeah, in the author's web interface, you wouldn't see any distributions now anymore. Uh, just want to show how how easy this stuff is. Um, so imagine you have installed Lee 15 SP1. Um, you have added. Um, the products you, you need and install the coupler. You, system, uh, you enable TFTP server, you enable Apache 2, and you enable the coupler. And all you are going to do then is run the script. This is Provo. And it's going to set up. And push and, and 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 deploy the possible installation sources into the, in, into coupler. It's Python. It takes a while. In the very end, um, out um, a, a coupler has the nice feature that you can split up OutTS files. We've done this. Um, that the partitioning is every everywhere the same, um, but especially for the sleep products, you have add-on products, and um, these have been, must, have, must be split out, and it's, 
Do you see this? It's already going to be replaced to the local. This is one thing I, I run into. It takes a long, long time to, to contact Nuremberg. If it's going to add on add an own product, it takes 10 minutes. And it's going to be replaced to the local mirror there as well in the Altiest files, and it works out smoothly. And yes, it's deployed. Yeah, and now you have, now you are where you, where we were. You can install these, these, these machines. And one second. In two new two new subcommands added. <coughs> generate all coupler subnetworks. We generate only one coupler subnetwork. The fact that it's not urgently needed, yeah, for <coughs> DHCP it, it's needed, of course. Um, now, the two whitelisted machines should show up there. What the hell? Which whitelisted machine? Right. Still worked. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there it is. It takes a while. It's Python, and it's okay. long time over to Pro to, to Provo. Um, it's going to 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 add the machines. Um, currently, there are only the two whitelisted. listed. Um, you don't have to do this if you if you um, yeah if, yeah you have to because of the DHCP server. Anyway, it's going to um, these two whitelisted machines are are maintained by Coupler now. DHCP is written. Um, in the current um, DHCP server in Provo, they have blacklisted this, the, these two MAC addresses for me. Um, all which is needed now is to disable the DHCP server over there and switch on, um, switch, uh, remove the whitelist and, and fully let it go. Oh. So if you say DHCP server, you mean the DHCP server for this particular subnet? Uh, right, for Provo it's Xen 70, and for ISUS as he said, it's, it's Hupta, and, um, I am, and, the, and the, the, the coupler servers there are coupler, whatever, novel.com, Havilab? Yeah, so no, um, no right. my point here is that it just, that we just need to take over the individual subnets. Right. Yeah, um, that was my point. No, so. This is coupler generated. Okay. And these two just have been added. Okay. Uh, and it must not interfere with the other one. Uh, with the salt in, 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 in Prague, it's salt maintained. Um, in, in, in every, everyone is doing it differently. And in this case, it would be f controlled by the Nuremberg main authors instance. Um, but in the subnetworks, there is a, is a pure coupler running, which is documented how to set up. You, you deploy it with a, with a couple of fill-up script, um, which, which is, yeah, and, and that's it. And you can fully install um, authors, uh, um, um, auto installations with all our products all over the world. Um, I'm done, thank you. Yeah, cool, thank you. Right, okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say for the back and for the salt things, uh, if we agree that these networks, which were mentioned before, go to uh, Cobbler and you maintain this, I will give you, you know, and uh, you can run your own DHCP and control it to the Cobbler, no problem. Less work for me. Um, your full information is stored in the, 
the authors database yeah which already said um, but infra guys have to be have to make sure that this data never gets lost this is <laughs> it's already mirrored for whatever yeah but this yeah. so this is um, basically the would be the initial uh, the start a uh, start point for my talk bit namely um, why we now have the software being taken care of someone now needs to maintain things, hardware, where the software runs on. And this is something which used to be the task of the infrastructure team in whichever shape or form. Um, but it's at this time quite unclear whether this continues to be the task of that and whether they will be willing to do so. So, but meanwhile, you know. Um. Not to this theme, but to the coupler part. Yeah. Um, a few words to the to the statement: Zusa managers should replace Ortrus. The one thing is, as now Zusa manager and Ortrus are using the same base coupler. This is very good because yes. uh, a lot of functions coupler has Zusa yeah. manager does not have, and with yeah. coupler, these functions get in there. And as Thomas is doing you now the rollout there, we also can verify that coupler really works and has no bugs and and uh, gaps in the functionality. Yeah, no, it has, but, yeah. but we are now can, can uh, fix start, them. Start working on them. Can fix them. No? And this is, of course, then an add-on to Zuse Manager. The main thing is that Zuse Manager does not want to have it do a one-off to maintain this network, but these parts should be part of the product. And that's probably why the, uh, why the pro uh, process or the, the project does not run at the pace some people want to have it. That's the main problem. And we are still working on that, that through the manager gets all these features in, and then we have to see at what point in time it will be possible to do the replace. Yeah, so, but, I'm, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, it was always a problem with the timeline of the Susan manager integration, but um, what was missing previously was the awareness that until that time, we need to continue to work. And until that time, we need to be able to fix issues with the existing code. So that was the one of the problems. So, um, question. Yeah. So there's been a bug open for a long time to add FMS info to Orthos for x86. Yes. Are you going to do that? It's there. Family model stepping. It's there. It's there yeah. now. Yeah. It is. In I the, did in the add. So no, the thing is, I. Um, I did add an FMS field to rack tables. FMS, family model stepping. There's CPU a bug information. Open. There's a bugzilla open against Orthos for like so, six years. Yes, so, so the, uh, the thing is that you, sorry? Um, right, but, it's, yes. but, rack, but rack tables doesn't matter. I mean, you need to be able to find it in that information through Orthos or through the web interface. Yeah. And, so. and if you're doing all this work, it would be really nice to yes. have, have that. Yes, yes, of course. But now, as I said, now we are finally at a position where we actually can work on these issues. Was that Try, uh, prior to the reorg. Maybe we can come together later and, yeah. and explain yeah. me. And it was unmaintained for quite some time. If you say it has been opened for whenever, it's nobody looked at it. Well, we've, we've, we've talked about it before because you were going to do a mapping from the text string uh, of the CPU type in Orthos to try and back derive the FMS. So it's, it's been talked about for a long time. Yeah. So please, if you're going to redesign this, Please do that, add that okay. information so that, you, because pretty often you're looking for a very specific machine and you need to be able to get that okay. information. I, I did a bit on this, yeah, anyway, I first tried the CPU ID and I've, I also, um, there was also maintained for quite a while this, this mapping with this um, uh, marketing CPU n code names that's to that's whatever. Yeah, and there is another string you, um, mapping or whatever you need. Um, it's, it's about CPU type in, in the end. Anyway, let's come, yeah, to, yeah. Let's come together later. So, um, so, but coming back to the thing with the, hard, uh, the, the hardware. So ideally, I would like to have Autos and the Autos instance running as a virtual machine somewhere just to, to provide the necessary redundancy and reliability which then would immediately have me looking at Lars, 
because he's running one of these clusters with wo which would be suitable for exactly this task things. And especially as you said that he already has some sort of instance running there, so it might just be relatively easy doing so. It is more, um, the one thing is, would you be willing to do so? Okay, because that would actually, my, uh, my preference here to um, have a VM ho hosting that VM on but the... But music, music is a virtual machine already. So running Autos, where? Autos, run is, is, Autos is running on running a virtual machine Running where? Running where? I only see the virtual machine. No, no idea where it's... So okay, what so is where, where is it run currently? So, so it's like uh, the Autos itself, it's yeah. a virtual machine at yeah. the moment, and it's uh, running in IND cluster. Oh, okay, so it's already so it's okay. And uh, in back, actually, yeah. we have uh, two machines. One was like a testing, and yeah. second more uh, for production. And exactly the same virtual machine okay. in the cluster. Okay, right. Okay, so, so, so but they will what, be what we need to make sure it's maybe have a look what we backupping yeah. to have a back database backup and all the necessary data. Okay, so that's the things which need to be done. And uh, I can give you already what we yeah. were doing with. Uh, and Giovanni and with Thomas uh, yeah. to park as a, like a playground because it's smaller and it's much easier to do this okay. things. And when we know what to do, we can go to the name back and do the same. Okay, good, cool. Right, so that appears to be solved, which is good. So um, the next thing is the actual hardware maintenance, which, as you're all aware, have been a pain point since ages. We are now in the lucky position that um, Stefan Fendt got a new full-time employee, or rather an old full-time employee, or an upgraded full-time employee, um, which is tasked to maintain, maintain the PowerPC and ARM servers, or ARM machines. Tony, stand up, it's you. <laughs> so, that's him. <laughs> so. For these things, we have someone dedicated for maintaining them. I, additionally, I just opened a job requisition for another position, again, actually an old position, for handling the Intel pre-production machines. And um, so that we then have a second person doing hardware, doing maintenance on the Intel machines, and my idea is that this person then also will be more or less maintaining the machines in the autos pool, seeing that, well, 60% of the Nuremberg machines are into pre-production machines. So there's a pretty high, heavy overla overlap there. Which is nice. But it also means that our current setup, how to report issues, by filing ticket, uh, tickets against infra is probably not going to work anymore because neither of these people working on them, uh, dedicated to work on machines, are part of the infra, infra team. So we have to look how to raise issues going forward. Ideally, I would like to have us integrated with the to-be-implemented ticket system of the SUSE IT, but um, I have so no idea how I would go about with that. Tell me. Me? Yeah, you. Okay, my last information about this is two months old. Um, there was a request going on from Atom to yeah. get a Jira instance yeah. exclusively, but that's it. That's all oh. information I have. Oh. At the so moment, much but there is so much rumor about that at the moment. So I hope we can clarify that somehow during the next weeks. Okay, right. Yeah. Um, that system is running since quite a while in test mode already, so it's existing. Which, which system? The um, Jira instance for a ticket. I don't, don't remember the name of okay, that. Okay, good. So um, well, but the the main pr problem here is that we actually need an official buy-in from those deploying investing in JIRA ticketing, that we can get access, that we A, can get access to this, and that the whole thing will be routed to us, which at this time, none of this exists. 
So um, I probably would need to raise it with my superiors if and when I see them again. Oh, dear. All right, too bad. So thus would be possibly a good way, but I can't really tell you whether it's going to work or not. Um, however, key takeaway is that I'm not sure whether filing tickets against infra is a good way to proceed. So um, we need to figure out how to handle uh, issues in the, in the meantime. At least for Power and uh, ARM, we now integrated new queues in the request tracker from infra, yeah. so they can be sent directly to there, they will be assigned to there, and then can, Tony can work on them. Okay, so can so can it's easy. It's easy to open up another queue if you think this is useful, and then we can all these yeah. tickets get assigned to the queue, and then we just have to look for someone who's working on that. Okay, queue. can we have an auto queue if it doesn't exist anymore? Yeah. Yeah. You okay, can. that's that easy. So it goes directly. Okay, right. Okay, so so that would be yeah. Um, uh, Tony just said that you know you know. Uh, Added him um, for uh, that he already has a kind of arm at SUSE DE. Um, um, that if you open it on a specific domain in, 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 in autos, you, you can assign maintainers to it, and it ends up in a specific infrastructure for a very specific person. We can already do this. Okay, good. So, which means that to, yeah, Martin. And uh, there is a one queue called ARCH. Yeah for the old times, yeah. and that still exists. Uh, okay. What we need to do, maybe it's have a look who is in that group for the maintaining oh, the things, yeah. and maybe assign the correct people. But uh, as you know, so. said, uh, there is the PPC, yeah. there is uh, SV90, and there is yeah. ARM. Yeah. So okay. we, right. we have the solution for now, and we will wait uh, for society and for this JIA if it is suitable for us or not. If not, we will keep uh, going what we have. Okay, good. So, meaning that, um, I would advise to use the button on the Autos infra, uh, on the Autos website to report issues because then it will be directed to the Autos queue and it should be directed to the correct persons, meaning not to the infrastructure team. So um, these were basically the key points I would like to raise, and I would be open to questions now if someone would have some. One thing which is rather inconsistent in Ortos is the fact that there are machines which are using the old root password. And sometimes the auto provisioning in Ortos is broken. So you have to chase someone that right. actually knows the old password and can reinstall the machine. Yes. Um, do raise a ticket. Um, the um, Ortos machine, Ortos should be able to get the right thing, have the right passwords. The problem is that um, we have settled on a default password, which, this being recorded, mind, so I'm not I'm mentioning it, um, which unfortunately requires specific capabilities of the BMC, and not every BMC is capable of even supporting this specific user. Because for some BMCs, you can't change the username. They are basically built into the machine. So these for these, obviously, the standard thing wouldn't work, and you need to have um, specific rules for these machines. But these needs to be coded in Autos itself so that Autos are able to access it. So, do raise a ticket. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> um, I didn't understand that it, this was about the BMC password, but anyway, the system password after, an, um, after a system is installed by yeah. Autos yeah. Uh, is taken from the corresponding AutoS profile. Yeah. Right, which has to be updated every time we change the default password. And it's no. a lot of... No, 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 right? no. Watch out. We have two sets of passwords for during installation. Right, right maybe. So, so root password has been modified. Um, one nice feature of this, of this coupler thing is that you can now have kind of include yeah, in, in Autoyust. Otherwise, we had at least 20 different XML Autoyust files, which were each of them, yeah, not huge, but... Yeah, you have to, anyway, so this is split it up there, yeah, um, because there's another crypt, uh, crypt algorithm for SLEE 11, which we have only two um, um, 
locations now where it has to um, has to get changed. Um, oh, the the new new one is used, of course. But yes, of course, you mm -hmm. always may hit the um, a machine which hasn't been reinstalled. Then it's the old one. Um, you can. Okay. You need a microphone, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> right. Many machines cannot be reinstalled through raw source uh, for various reasons. And yeah, 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 yeah. But this is um, again. Okay. This okay. Is there's only um, you always oh, have sure. have, have the manual installation oh. possible oh. as well. Maybe it should be propagated a bit more. Uh, if you if you, in fact, Autiast uh, Autiast in the end is to is is issue is calling a specific okay. script. Um, you, you, you can w uh, double you get um, the script yourself and execute it, and it's and it's all all set up that authors can scan the machine and and you have the password and so on. Yeah. So no, um, you are right, Petro. Not authors cannot set up every machine because some machines have some peculiarities which simply do not agree with what authors thinks it should be. Yeah, it's also about, for, for Hannes has a lot of special features with his tons of block devices, whatever, it's it's, it doesn't make sense to integrate there. And yeah. um, so you have I'm always people who have to, 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 to um, do a manual installation. Um, maybe we should somehow propagate or, or add it to uh, documentation a bit more obvious. Um, that you can download this after Insta script yourself, and that it's then fully integrated um, with um, as you as, as you expected. Yeah. So I mean, the whole thing is a bit more complicated than that, as usual, because originally even Slash had issues installing on machines with well more than one block device. Um, that's not a notorious fear for Slash 11 and Slash 12. Um, Slash 15, or rather with the switch to UFI. These problems are largely gone, thank God. But still, um, the Autoyast has an issue picking the right device for installation. This can be solved or could be solved if we were able to pass in the correct dev device where to install, but this would require another field in the Autos database so that we can hold that device name where we should be installing. And so that would be, or actually is another feature request for Autos, just, well, just have a field for the root device because then we can actually do an auto install of these things. But until we don't, until that time we have that field, we can't really do anything there. Yes. I would like to reiterate the request I made before. I think for Ortos maintenance purposes, in every subnet where there is an Ortos deployment, there should be an inexpensive physical machine that. Uh, already is there and already uh, exists. I, that was my that was a gross mischaracterization that already exists. Two of the performance team test machines were reserved permanently and used as a test bed. And one of them is used by the test grid to act for uh, server client testing. Yeah. So it's rarely used, but eventually the automation is for our team is going to come along and it's going to try and reserve its server to talk mm -hmm. to, and it's not going to be able to because it's currently being used as a cobbler test. So when this guy says there's test machines that are used for cobbler in Prague, there are two machines that are being used for testing, but they're actually performance team test machines, one of which is in the grid and used by our team in for development purposes. Well, but, I, mean, I don't really know the setup in Prague, how many machines there are there and what the setup is, but I can speak for Nuremberg, it shouldn't really be a problem finding machines which can be used as a test bit for no, all but, but It's just for Giovanni's point saying that you yeah. shouldn't take arbitrary development machines for the purposes of Orthos experimentation. And I just want to correct the statement that there is such development, uh, there, such test I've machines for cobbler development available, there isn't. Other. I would have thought that the people doing Orthos development did their due diligence and didn't pick the important machines. I would have thought so. We are all human, so yes, I mean, you're it, right. It, uh, but it, it, yes, has been, it has been negotiated. If so you yeah, so you, you need the machine. I'm, I'm so in principle, yes, of course. I mean, that's what I, I would expect to, to happen in the future. Anyway. Yeah, so yeah, 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 sure. So anything else? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm closing down. Right, okay. Thank you very much for your attention. And I do so hope next year we won't have this talk again.